Hey guys, it's Andre. I hope you enjoyed that little breakfast b-roll sequence that I put together. It's been an interesting couple of weeks stuck inside, so I thought I'd make the best of it and create something cool. If you couldn't tell by the sequence, I am massively inspired by Daniel Schiffer and all of the videos on his YouTube channel. If you don't know of Daniel Schiffer, pause this video right now, and go over to his channel, and subscribe. I really wanted to create something similar to his style while also adding my own unique flair. And I want to take you guys through the entire process of what it was like to create this kind of video. So let's jump into it. All right guys, so here is the sequence in Adobe Premiere. And before I get started, I wanna break down the four main elements that I've utilized to create this sequence. These elements are one, set design and pre-production, two, in-camera transitions, three, enhancing in-camera transitions, and four, sound design. The first two elements are of course dealing with the production phase, while the last two deal with post-production. So element number one is actually a really important part of filmmaking that I feel like nobody really talks about, and that's set design and pre-production. Set design in particular, because let me tell you, before I set up the light and the camera, the first thing I did, the absolute first thing I did was remove everything that I didn't want to be in the background and on the set. I removed all of the magnets from my refrigerator. I took away just anything that was distracting from the background. Now there are a couple things that I left there so it didn't feel so empty, but for the most part, I cleared out everything. It's always the littlest things that will make or break a video and that really add that final polish. So make sure you remove any distracting elements from your video. Element number two is in-camera transitions. These are the backbone of what makes this B-roll sequence so, so epic and so cool. Now the in-camera transitions go hand in hand with post-production because we're going to be enhancing these in-camera transitions in Adobe Premiere. So for this first shot, I actually slid my camera on a little cloth to get that nice slider movement because I don't have a, a slider. And all of this was handheld, by the way. I didn't use any gimbals or anything fancy like that. It was just me, my camera, and my hands. So we have the first shot sliding in, pan down, and then the next shot, we're coming up, returning with her pouring it. And then the next shot, I had her throw the egg from one hand to the other. So we're kind of following that motion with the cup, see? And that creates that, sm that seamless transition that we're, we're going for. So this is where the pre-production comes in as well, because you have to know what you want to do in each shot, and you have to know how that's going to transition into the next shot. So I'll be honest, guys, I didn't really do any formal pre-production, writing things out or making a shot list or anything like that. I just looked, knew all the ingredients that were going to be in it, and I kind of thought about where I wanted this to go while shooting it. And then the rest kind of just comes in post. Like you can play around with things in post-production, see what fits together, see what works, see what doesn't, and some things will have to be cut out. And that's what I had to do to make this work the way I wanted it to. Cut to another shot of the egg in her hand in a similar position as where she is holding it. So it kind of makes it look like almost one clip. And we're going down with this shot. So the next shot, the next shot isn't necessarily going down, but sometimes you can get away with it. Since the egg is in the same spot, it kind of looks seamless. Right there, we had a hard cut. Right here, we have a rotating shot. So I rotated my camera as quickly as I could as she turned it. And I'm shooting in all 60 FPS so that I can slow this stuff down. For this shot, I come up from the stove and I turn the camera as she flips the pancake. And then I zoom and then I zoom into this shot and out of this one, creating that transition. For this shot, camera comes down. Next shot, camera also comes down. And then the end of the sequence is nothing special. Having less transitions at the end of the video kind of tells the audience that the video is wrapping up and that's ending. So that's something you might want to consider doing. So that is how the in-camera transitions work together with post-production. So enhancing the in-camera transitions has a lot to do with speed ramping. So what I mean by enhancing the in-camera transitions with post-production is mainly speed ramping. Speed ramping allows you to get a really smooth motion between two clips and it looks really cool. So for this shot, for example, I speed ramped the end and I have it pre-composed so the speed ramp is actually over here. I just speed ramped the end and I smoothed it out so that it looks like that. 
and together it blends perfectly. So what I did to enhance this shot was to stabilize the motion of the egg so that it stays pretty much in the center. And you can do that just with the stabilized motion in the motion tracker. Stabilize the egg, then I added some more keyframes, and yeah. So another way I enhance in-camera transitions is by animating the different parameters, position, scale, anything like that. So for this shot right here, we have the egg coming down, and we actually already cracked the egg and put it in, but I didn't get the shot that I wanted. So I had her do it again, but lightly, so that it didn't actually crack. But I wanted that impact of cracking the egg. So what I did was jump over to After Effects. I duplicated my original footage. I added a null and opened the position parameter. I added a wiggle. I parented the position to that wiggle position. And then with the clip up top, I simply cut it up. And by pressing Command Shift D, you can create a gap. And wherever that gap is, is where the clip underneath is going to play with the wiggle. So that allows you to selectively apply the wiggle effect. And then inside of Premiere, I animated the Y position so that the egg stayed more in frame. For this shot here, I added a steam overlay. So you can see what that does without the overlay. And with it, it really just adds a little subtle effect on top of the pancakes. And what I also did was animate the scale as we're pulling back just to heighten the motion of the camera. So this is what I mean by enhancing in camera transitions. It's really, it's not about creating moves that aren't already there, but it's about enhancing the moves that are to increase that, that drama and that epic feeling. For this shot here where it slams down the knife, I use the technique that I learned from Daniel Schiffer where he put his hand under the camera and then slam the camera down to give it that little rumble, that little shake. And then I went to After Effects and added that wiggle effect like I showed you guys before to enhance that further. And this is the final result. The fourth element to creating these videos is the sound design. So as you can see here, I have a ton of sound effects that I've added, and let's just listen to this with just the sound design, no music. So with sound design, it's all about getting creative. I couldn't find a cake mixing sound effect online. So all I did was I found this mud squish sound effect, put it down to 70% speed, and I got this incredible sound. And it worked perfectly for this clip and for a couple clips after that, actually. Listen to this sound here. Sounds like a chop, right? It's actually a wood chop sound effect. Someone's chopping wood. And all I did was added a high pass. And I think that's pretty much it. What else did I do? I added a high pass, I added a compressor, and now it sounds like cutting on a cutting board. So it's all about getting creative and just thinking how you can use different sounds to create something else, if you can't find the sound that you're looking for. So one thing to note is that the music should drive the visuals. I'm always cutting on beats. I'm slowing down the edit if the song slows down and I'm speeding it up when the song speeds up. So that's really important to do to make the piece really feel cohesive. Those are the four main elements that I think really work to create this kind of video. I know it wasn't super in depth, but hopefully it gave you a general overview. There are other tutorials out there on YouTube that cover everything that I've just talked about. This, I just wanted to show you guys how it all comes together. If you're interested in learning in depth about any of the techniques that I shared, feel free to leave a comment and let me know what you wanna see next. And that's all I got for today, guys. Hope you learned something. If you did, make sure to give this video a like. And if you do end up using any of these tips in your own videos, make sure to tag me on Instagram at andre.fru so I can see what you guys are working on. Thanks again for watching and remember, always keep creating.